Former Congresswoman and ex-Democrat Tulsi Gabbard has stumped for multiple Republican lawmakers and candidates in advance of the midterms. Earlier this month, Gabbard, who served four terms in the House as a Democratic representative from Hawaii, served as DNC vice chair, and sought the party's presidential nomination in 2020, left the Democrats. Gabbard claimed that Democrats have become too enamored with far-left identity politics and socialistic economics, and were a threat to free speech. She has taken to the campaign trail, supporting hard right politicians like Utah Senator Mike Lee, who is facing a tougher-than-expected challenge from independent candidate Evan McMullen. Gabbard also hit the trail for Nevada Senate Republican candidate Adam Laxalt and Michigan GOP gubernatorial nominee Tudor Dixon. She has sounded a message to voters' claims that the Democratic Party is a threat to freedom, which has made her a darling of the right, while effectively shunned by the left. So, uh, Tulsi, it's been a big couple of weeks for you. A anything new happen in your life? <laughs> well, the surf in Hawaii was great last Sunday, I gotta say. Yes. <laughs> um, is our audio okay here? I think it's gonna be okay. We just gotta have faith and it'll get us there. Okay, all right. Uh, first of all, it's great to be here, to join you and your family and all of your friends. You know, I, um, I was not tracking closely your uh, up until very recently. Uh, someone sent me an email and said, hey, Glenn Beck is going out to campaign for Mike Lee. You really should, too. And uh, I don't know who sent me this email, but it caused me to go and start looking into it. I texted Mike right away, and I just said, let me know how I can help. And that was about five days ago, and here we are. And, and we're gonna get into it, and we're gonna talk about it a little more, but I did an interview with one of your local radio stations yesterday, who I had actually sat with a couple years ago when I came through here last. And uh, one of the hosts said, hey, Tulsi, you know, uh, the guy who's running against Mike Lee is accusing Mike of using the Constitution as a prop. You know, he carries around with him everywhere he goes. <laughs> and I told the host, I said, this guy has obviously never met Mike Lee. Because if you think that he's using our Constitution as a prop, you're not paying attention. This is how Mike and I got to know each other when I was serving in Congress. Uh, we worked together specifically on issues related to the War Powers Act and how for so long Congress has abdicated the responsibility that our founders gave only to Congress as the body responsible to declare war or not, to be accountable to we as voters, we the American people. Instead, we have for so long had cowards leading us in Congress who refuse to make a decision, who refuse to exercise leadership, who do not care for the Constitution, and instead like to spend their time pointing fingers at somebody else and not doing their job. So that's why I'm really happy to be here with you, Mike. I'm proud to stand with you, proud to support you, so that you can go back and continue to defend the Constitution at a time when we need it most. Yeah, I'm going to turn my mic back on now. Hopefully it won't uh, cause us any more angst. I appreciate you talking about that. You know, uh, the war power really is something that has become a problem. We have, o over the years, moved power away from the American people increasingly, moved yeah. it to Washington. Within Washington, we've tended to move power uh, from the people's elected representatives in, in Washington over to the executive branch, sometimes to unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats, sometimes to the president directly. And this has caused problems. But nowhere has this been more evident than in the war powers. And that, that's right. you're right, that's, that's where you and I first became acquainted when we came together and said, this is a problem, we gotta stop it. Yeah. And it was kind of a motley uh, group of us, uh, <laughs> sort of land of the misfit toys, Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, Mike yeah. Lee, I mean. These are, Rand Paul. <laughs> uh, our, they don't necessarily rhyme, they, they, they don't see us coming together uh, uh, most of the time, but it is important because 
Otherwise, it becomes way too easy to get into war. Yeah. Now, you have an especial, especially great appreciation for this, uh, given the various ways that you've served our country. Tell me how you see the usurpation of the war power uh, by the executive branch as being something that creates other problems, gets us into war. Tell us a little bit about the military industrial complex. It's no one knows the cost of war, the negative consequences, and the tragedy of war more than those who have served. No one knows. No one values peace more than those who have sacrificed our brothers and sisters at war. And so when we look at the grave responsibility that Congress has to be the body that weighs what are the threats to our country, what role should we have uh, in foreign policy, what role should our military have in defending our freedom and security, and honoring that service and sacrifice in the way that, that our men and women in uniform deserve. Unfortunately, what we see and what we're seeing under this administration, but previous presidents as well, both Democrat and Republican, is a lack of respect for that sacrifice and the Constitution, and instead prioritizing the interests of the military industrial complex who we're seeing are making a lot of money these days, um, who somehow found another war to start very quickly after the Afghanistan war ended, and who, most importantly, it comes down to this, we as the American people don't get a say when they don't follow the Constitution. Our founders created this with a very specific intent. You know, they saw the dangers of having one person with the authority to start a war knowing what the cost and consequences are. So they said, we're gonna make it really hard by forcing all these people coming from all over the country to come together and actually debate it, actually weigh what those costs and consequences are. What we're seeing now with rising inflation, rising gas prices, a lot of these costs are coming from this proxy war that this administration is waging with Russia. You don't hear about this much in the news or from Democrats because the party that I just left has become the war party, subservient to the military industrial complex, without any care for the Constitution. And I thought it was very telling, just a couple of days ago on the 24th, I know you saw the letter that uh, people in the Progressive Caucus released, sending to President Biden, saying a whole bunch of things, but essentially saying the cost and consequences of war are great. The longer this war, and I'm paraphrasing, but their message was the longer this war continues to escalate, the more disastrous the suffering will be for the people of Ukraine and the more the American people, we will continue to see uh, challenges within our own economy, uh, rising gas prices, increasing inflation, and so on. What to speak of the risk of nuclear war. It didn't take but one day for them to get a whole bunch of backlash from the mainstream media and the warmongers in the Democrat Party to not only immediately retract the letter, and say, oh, well, the staff released it prematurely, even though they all signed their names to it. <laughs> and then even worse, it gets worse than that. They then bent over backwards because they were so afraid of the backlash. They bent over backwards to say, no, 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 no diplomacy. We will, I'm trying to remember the quote, Pramila Jayapal, the chair of the Progressive Caucus said, uh, diplomacy is necessary to end wars, and diplomacy will happen only after the war is ended once Ukraine has won. <laughs> this isn't rocket science, right? I mean, this is a member of Congress who's the chair of this caucus, and for her to make such a statement like that gives us a big sign of the pressures that are coming from the top in the Democrat Party that care not for the people of Ukraine who this ending this war would benefit most, not for the American people, but instead it's about power and it's about money. I am so proud to join you in welcoming Adam Laxalt, your next senator of the state of New York.
much, Rocky. Thank you all so much for being here on this beautiful day. I'm just glad I'm not having to wear a big winter jacket, so thank you for that. Um, I've also been asked to share with you some pretty serious breaking news. Apparently the Lions are up 14 to zero. <laughs> A lot of you might not know this, but uh, I have family roots here in Michigan. My mom grew up in Grand Rapids and uh, graduated from East Grand Rapids, went to University of Michigan, and then my dad came from the islands and swooped her up, and she never looked back, left the winter clothes behind. But, uh, you know, she's always imparted in us five kids. I'm the fourth of five kids, three older brothers and a younger sister, and, and her and my dad really raised us uh, with the values that, that she grew up in putting faith and family and our country first. And so I'm, I'm just so happy to be able to be here with all of you, fellow veterans who've served across generations who know what that really means. You know, we hear a lot of rhetoric being thrown around, especially during election time. Uh, we hear a lot of thank you for your service, veterans from politicians, especially around Veterans Day. We hear fancy speeches around Memorial Day. But if you're like me, when I hear those speeches, they kind of rub me the wrong way. Because you can tell that they are coming from an empty place and that they're saying the things that they think will get them votes and the things they think will get them support rather than actually speaking to the warrior ethos that every single one of us here who has worn the uniform or who continues to serve has etched within our hearts. When we go through basic training, I went through basic training in 2003 at Fort Jackson in South Carolina. We go through boot camp. When we wear that uniform, we understand what that really means. When we deploy overseas into combat, we understand what that really means. When we say, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. And I will never leave a fallen comrade. And that's why wherever I go, when I have the privilege of being able to be around those who have served, I know that we know each other even though we're meeting for the first time. Because we know what those words mean. We do our best to live them. Whether we are still serving in uniform or we're continue on, continuing on in our lives. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here today to support Tudor Dixon for governor. Because... This isn't one of those elections where you're just kind of like, yeah, you know, both candidates are right. I kind of like this one more than that one. All across this country, we have a very clear choice. We have a clear choice between those who are more interested in furthering their own power, their own selfish ambition, or the interests of, of uh, those who fund their campaigns, versus strong, courageous leaders who are committed to upholding the Constitution, who are committed to ensuring that the freedom of every American is protected, who are committed to ensuring that our kids are able to grow up free in this country that we love. Unfortunately, we have a party that's in power right now in Washington that stands against those very freedoms. Every one of us has taken an oath to support and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We know what that really means. Every member of Congress, every member of the House, the Senate, they take that same oath. But too many of them have either forgotten or who are directly seeking to undermine it. They think that government has all the answers, that big government knows what's better for us than we do for ourselves and our kids. Coming in and saying, well, government gets to tell you what values and principles they're gonna teach your kids in school that you as parents don't get a right or a say. Coming in and telling us in so many different ways that we must comply or face the consequences. So we have to have a check and balance on this power. It's why I'm going and supporting some great candidates like Tom Barrett, who's running for Congress, who will take a stand for peace. 
who will fight for our freedom. Clear contrast, a clear contrast in that race, just as there is in this race for governor. Because as the leader of Michigan, it's your governor who has the ability to be that check and balance on the federal government trying to impose itself on the people of your state. This election couldn't be more critical for us to take a stand for each other and for our future. You know Tudor Dixon, you have heard from her, you have had insight into her heart. And I know she's somebody who's in this for the right reasons. Because I've spoken to her and looked into her eyes and I've seen her speak and share what's in her heart with you. That she will fight for every single one of you and your families just as hard as she is fighting for her own. She is someone who has answered that call to serve. Her family sacrificing in the process. I was in the car with her this morning and her daughter called and FaceTimed and was crying about something that was happening at home. I can only imagine that she wished that she could be there with her, but knows that she is fighting for all of us. This is a big deal. And so as we head into the final stretch of this campaign, as we head into the final stretch of this election, you've heard it from Shane, you'll hear it from me, you'll hear it from Tudor. Think about those people in your lives who maybe like me, were Democrats or are Democrats, but who are really frustrated with the direction that they have taken our country and this state. Let them know why you care. Let them know why you're supporting Tudor Dixon and why this change in leadership is so essential for Michigan. Why it is so essential for the safety and well-being and education of our kids. Why it is so essential for us to make sure that we have strong leadership in place that will keep our community safe, that will support our law enforcement, that will reinvigorate our economy. I have no doubt that Tudor Dixon is the right person for the right job at this time. Please join me in supporting and welcoming your next governor, Tudor Dixon. <laughs>